despite your efforts to keep talking, we, we do have a few minutes for oh, a formal Q&A, yes. uh, which will run on the same places as usual. Kim, you're first. Um, so, quickly back to the House Bob scenario. Ah, uh, I was sure. Um, I yes. know, I know. But you just throw one or two. Um, so, after Alice makes a measurement, can she update her knowledge of the past? Yeah, of course. Okay, so, so she makes a measurement, she gets a result, and now she knows more about the past than she knew before. Yes. Okay. Um, that information, I assume, was always there in the past. It just, she just didn't know. No. Okay, you want me to go in a network of causality and other things? No, I don't want to enter there. You, yeah, of course, she knows more, but he, she didn't perform other measurements. Okay, so but she's learned something she didn't know about yeah, the past. Of course. Okay, yeah, so absolutely. there was something there to know. There's something know. there to know. Okay. Yes, definitely. Now, but she knows more than both. Okay. Now that's the well, but when she chooses her measurements, she's depending saying, on what she chooses. It depends on what she chooses. It's so now that's that's her causality right there. Okay, it depends on your definition of retrocausality. Now, I can uh, envisage so many different definitions. That, but look, this is what it is. Do whatever you want with this. Okay? <laughs> yes. Um, so. Yes. Uh, Alice has made a measurement. You showed us in a an explicit way of doing a measurement uh, of the spin correlation across two times. Yes. Now, given the, the space-like simulation with the pre and the post selection, yes. presumably I could realize that measurement as some measurement on two. Oh, there are, there are different ways of doing. So let me see if I understand the question correctly. I have I a single part. Actually, my, my question was, oh. in, in a space-like simulation, I can think of lots of measurements I could do across all n particles in between the pre and the post selection. Yes. And my question is whether any such measurement would correspond to something that I can do in the time-like case. Yes. Uh, well, um, let me be a bit more careful. Um, when we talk about a measurement, we have to be a bit careful of what we mean. A measurement has always two aspects. One of them is tells us about what was in the past, and the other is prepares something for the future. Okay. So if you think of the Krauss operator, which is the basic element that describes a measurement, as a bra and a cat, and the, the bra part is the one that looks towards the past, and the cat is the one that looks towards the future. In the ordinary von Neumann measurement, we measure and we find one, uh, and one eigenstate, and then we prepare the particle in the same eigenstate. That is a rather trivial thing. It's in fact the most symmetric measurement as you want. Uh, so, if you only ask about, can I measure something, and you are only interested in looking towards the past, or what is the incoming thing, and telling something about that, it's a different thing than if you ask for the full thing, and what am I going to prepare. So there are things that I can do on many particles, because there it's a question of no locality, but it's not a question of causality. So not every single set of cross operators can be measured on a single particle, multi-time. Because they would, they would allow actually signaling backwards in time. So you have to be a bit careful there. Okay, because what, what you are allowed, you are allowed to write the operators, but may have consequences that you don't want. I can elaborate more. I mean, it sort of could be that I mean, the, the initial objection to the simple-minded way of doing it was it gives us too much information. Indeed. Indeed. Could but still so be then that somehow this entangled version gives too much information. If there are things you can do in the middle there that don't really have a corresponding... Well, it, it's not so much as on the results of the measurement, but on what you prepare for, for the measurement. Or, or, or 
its future. Uh, or, no, if you allow this to be non-local and on this to be non-local in time, you can do exactly the same thing. But otherwise, you have to be really careful. But here I was. Um, I can see. Can I mimic everything here? Um, let me get it back. Take, take it back. Uh, yes, whatever you can measure in one, you can measure in the other. <laughs> because, sorry about this, you know, some of the questions may be puzzling. Uh, because you define what to measure in an operational way, you say, I perform these unitaries here and there, and if I'm able to do it here, I will be able to do it in the time domain. If you give me a description, of how you perform the measurement here, I can immediately mimic it up there. If you, if, you, if you don't give me a description, but you only give me a set of Krauss operators, that is a different thing. Thank you. Yeah. There are sets of Krauss operators that, that obey all the normalization things, but they are still unmeasurable. Look, your finger. Just but not the vice versa. Which vice versa? It's not, it's much, uh, you can have more power to make non-local measurement in time than in space, because causality may prevent some of them. Well, uh, yes, because here you want non-signaling in two directions, while here you allow signaling in one, but not in the other. Oh, fuck this. This time I agree. <laughs> yeah. um, so I really had the same question as John, but uh, maybe you could uh, give perhaps explicitly <coughs> how you would do a bell measurement between two moments of time, just as an example. How are you looking at that? Oh, a bell measurement between two moments of time. Um, I can't. I need a couple more moments of time because <laughs> I want to measure the difference. If I measure the difference in sigma x, in sigma y, and in sigma z, then I'm done. Then two I can enough. certify that I have a two enough. Sorry? Two enough. Two. Oh, two enough. Okay, fine. So I need, if I can only touch the system in one way between two moments, now, now I, need, I can do it. You know, I measure sigma x between this time and that time, and sigma y between this time and that time, and then I certify that what comes here is full. <coughs> and what comes here is full in a singlet, and so on. Excellent. I love the way in which you offer answers to questions that nobody thought about. That's important if you... Right, right. This is what the actor is doing. He says, I have an interesting answer. Now you guys go and give me interesting questions for that answer. Yes. Sorry for doing the uh, usual thing. You again want to find out how to live a double life? No. <laughs> okay. A much more mundane question. Okay. We're not going to like it. Okay. Alice and Bob. Alice. Alice on the left, Bob on the right. right. They are making a last choice moment. Which spin direction they want to yes. measure. And then you repeat it many times, and you compare, and it turns out that you can make the following counterfactual. Has Bob been choosing another direction? Alice would get down rather than up. This is what made your friend, our friend, yesterday, go, may I say, almost pathetically, to looking for uh, velocities faster than light, but not infinite, in order to explain that. Oh, which, which is very nice, and uh, we all appreciate it. But I'd love to see the uh, formalism of every moment a new universe applied to this question, which is being asked for how many years now? Uh, ever since Bell's inequality? Look, uh, am I asking too much? No. That doesn't mean that you are going to get it. Uh, look, here. It depends very much on what are the rules of the game that you want to play. If you say the moment I, I talk about states propagating forward and backward in time, it's very easy for me to just propagate things backward in time, then across via the entanglement and on the other side. If you are happy with that, I'm happy. 
if you want to talk about that was not pathetic. Okay. Uh, that was probably wrong, but doesn't matter. Yeah, no, Nicola, no. we're talking about it. Uh, now you may want to you may want to put here the V speed. Now that is interesting. I never thought of that. And uh, that would be interesting in this scenario to say, can I put a V speed? And, but you see, this is not really meant for hidden variables. This is a really discussing about quantum mechanics. What I want to appreciate, this is not an interpretation. This is pure quantum mechanics. I just rewrite quantum mechanics in a different way. But it is nothing else than quantum mechanics. And it is fully equivalent with quantum mechanics, and that's the end of it. Only that is nice. And allows for it. We have time for one last question, if anyone has it. Ken. If Alice, as you answered my first question, can't update her knowledge in the past, then it's not equivalent to standard quantum mechanics. Because in standard quantum mechanics, uh, you never learn more about the past after learning. In standard quantum mechanics, obviously you do. This is the whole idea of pre and post selection. You are informed about this, and now you update your information about what the, the the, the statistic was at intermediate times. That's, that's what you do all the time. Okay, the, the initial state here is a singlet state. Yeah. That's, okay, if there are no hidden variables, no, okay. then, there's nothing, then there's nothing to update, there's nothing to learn about the past. No, the past no, no, but, no, but suppose that another measurement was produced here by somebody else, okay. by Charlie. And now Alice, by performing a measurement here, she can infer things there that she wouldn't have been able to infer had she not known the result of that measurement. She can update her knowledge of all the statistics. If there's something to update, this act this new. This is not standard quantum mechanics. Because in standard quantum mechanics, there's nothing, there's nothing to learn. In standard quantum mechanics, if somebody performed a measurement here, if there is no measurement that was performed, OK, you can talk about the states and whatever. And in my case, as a matter of fact, you see the beauty of this state. May I answer a question that was not asked? Uh, you talk about Lorentz invariance and other things. And there is a problem with, with uh, making the collapse. Because you say n is measured here. When did the state collapse on both sides? Did it collapse here? Or did it collapse there? Or did it collapse there? When, when did the collapse occur? That depends on your frame of reference. This thing says, no, nothing happened here. Nothing happened here. Nothing happened there. The only place where something happened is here, where Alice touched. So this solves, by the way, the Lorentz covariance. OK? Now you say, look, perhaps somebody else did something else here. Alice measured there and somebody else performed the measurement here. Well, or if somebody else didn't perform anything here, all I would say, the only place in which something happens is there. You want me to ask about probabilities here? Well, nothing happened here. The state is undisturbed. If somebody, however, performed a measurement, now Alice knowing the result of that, now she has this state, which is new. This is the state psi that propagates back. It's not something undefined. So now she uses that knowledge together with S to update her probability uh, distribution at that moment. So she can use it because something new happens, but the something new that happens happens here. And this thing is the one that we went to S. That was the same. Okay, uh, I think we're out of time. So please join me in thanking Sandy very warmly. For <laughs>